Stop making excuses. All right. Stop making excuses. You made an excuse from 2020 all the way to 2023. You made literally nothing but excuses. Going into 2024, man, we finna enter into a new season. We finna enter a new year. Let's stop making excuses. And I'm not the one that's going to say, oh, 2024 is going to be my year. Because I truly believe that if you made it through 2020 and you made it all the way to 2023 with no diseases, with no, with, without getting shot, without getting, you know, ending yourself, whatever it is. If you made it all these years up to 2024, look, every year has been your year. Okay, regardless of what you accomplish, every year has been your year because God got you from 2020 all the way to 2023. We take that stuff for granted. Okay, we really do. But I'm not going to go into all that. I just want to come on here because this is my last video before 2024. All right. So first off, happy New Year's to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Happy New Year's to you and your family. Uh, I, I really hope that you guys had a wonderful year this year. And going to 2024, let's stop making excuses. We make an excuse for everything, bro. Everything. Oh, I'm going to get into the gym. Okay, why you haven't gotten to the gym? Oh, time just really haven't been on my side. I just really been busy. Busy with what? <laughs> busy with what? When people come and say that they've been so busy with a lot of stuff, I believe that is because you don't have a balance in your life. You know what I'm saying? If you have a balance, if you know how to manage your time, because trust and believe me, if y'all check y'all screen time, and you see how long you've been on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, three hours on TikTok. That's three hours you could be doing something on your craft. Two hours on Instagram. That's two hours you could be doing something with your craft. You know what I'm saying? Five hours on YouTube. And I'm not just talking to y'all and saying, I'm so perfect. I am so. No, because this year I made excuses. Last year I made excuses. And the year, after, and the year before that I made an excuse. I always make excuses because sometimes excuses feel so good to the ears, bro. It feels so good to sometimes hear yourself say, oh, I'm busy. Oh, I, I couldn't do this. Why? Oh, the reason why I didn't do this is because of this or because of that. We make so many excuses, bro. And we need to go into this new year without making any excuses. If we say we go do something, manage your time. Write it down. Tell yourself that, look, I'm going to handle this. I'm going to knock this out. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not going into this new year with no new year resolutions because I truly believe that whatever you want it, whatever you want to start in 2024, start now. I said myself that, oh, I'm going to be a pescatarian. 2024, I'm going, I'm going to be a pescatarian. But instead of saying 2024, I'm going to be a pescatarian, I decided to be a pescatarian starting December 8th because that's when I came up with the idea that I want to be a pescatarian. So I've been a pescatarian since December 8th. I wasn't going to wait until the new year to say I'm going to be a pescatarian. You know what I'm saying? Because whatever I say I'm going to do in a new year, why can't I do now? Oh, I'm going to start a business. Okay, I'm going to start a business going to 2024. Okay, cool. But why not start now? You know what I'm saying? What's holding you back now? What are you, what are you going to do January 1st that you can't do right now? Because if I say I'm going to start a business, okay, let me start looking up stuff about this business. Okay, let me create my name. Okay, let me create this. Let me, I'll be starting that junk now. I won't wait until the new year. Because the more I wait, the more I'm going to forget, the more I'm going to push it back, the more I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to do it in February. Oh, I'm going to do it in March. Oh, I'm going to do it in April, May, June. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's going to keep getting pushed back before you know it. We're going to be six months into 2024 and you still yet yeah, haven't started that business. You know what I'm saying? So going into 2024, don't make an excuse. And I'm going to take it even deeper. Stop making an excuse to why you don't want to follow Jesus Christ. Stop making an excuse for that, bro. Why are you seriously making? I know some of y'all are probably, oh, yep, yep, time to go. Yep, y'all clicked off the video because the truth sometimes hurts your ears. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to hear the truth in a world full of lies. But y'all really need to stop. Stop making excuses for not following Jesus, bro. What is your excuse? What is your excuse? And I'm not going to say that typical, oh, I, I want to get this done before I follow Jesus. I want to get that done. Now, I am going to, I actually, I take that back. I am going to mention that too. But number one reason why some of y'all don't want to follow Jesus Christ is because of what y'all hear other people do. Oh, I mean, what y'all see other people doing, what y'all hear other people say. Sometimes you got to do your research for yourself to understand the truth behind Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? I see people in my comment section all the time. Oh, I don't believe in fiction. First of all, what, what Bible verses have you read? Have you even read the Bible? Oh, let me guess. You read Genesis. That's it. God created the heavens and the earth. That, that's what you read. That's all you remember. You know what I'm saying? Like, what scriptures have you really read? Not the scriptures you've seen on Instagram 
or TikTok, what scriptures have you honestly read yourself and read it in context and try to understand the scriptures and try to understand the history behind the scriptures? How many scriptures have you read yourself? Going to 2024, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, ask yourself, why don't you believe? Is it because of what another Christian said? Because remind yourself that this is not a religion. This is a relationship. So if I want a relationship with a person who created me, you know what I'm saying? God, Yahweh. If I want a relationship with his son, Jesus Christ, Yahshua, the one who died on the cross for my sins, then let me go ahead and do my research. Let me not make an excuse for not following him because, oh, this Christian judged me. Christians do this. Christians do that. Christians do that. It don't matter what other Christians do because not every Christian, oh, this is going to hurt y'all. Not every Christian going to make it to heaven. Not every Christian going to make it to heaven. That's why we got to be in our word on a regular day basis. We got to stay into this word. And I'm not, I'm, I'm a victim of it, y'all. I've been making excuses for not being in my word. Oh, I work too much. Oh, I'm tired. But it's crazy to me how I can get into my word and I will get tired instantly. But let me open up TikTok. I'm wide awake. I'm ha ha ha. I'm wide awake. It's because my flesh don't want to. My flesh don't want to hear the truth. My flesh love the, the love the entertainment, bros. Social media is a dopamine that has literally brainwashed all of us that we can't even stay focused on something for a good ten minutes because now you got YouTube Shorts, TikTok, which is a lot of shorts. Now you got Facebook Reels and Instagram Reels. Every clip is like one minute long, thirty seconds, sixty seconds. So we can't even stay focused on a book no more. R.I.P. to this generation. I'm one of them, bro. I can't stay focused. Every time I watch a video, bro, and it's getting too long and it's not entertaining me, I click off. Especially if it's a video about education and something that I need to learn, I click off. I start, oh, and I want to watch a YouTube short about it. You see what I'm saying? So going into this new year, don't make an excuse for not following Jesus. Forget what everybody else is doing in their relationship with Christ. Because not all of them go make it to heaven. You got to find your own relationship with Christ. This is your personal walk. This is your personal walk. And everybody who want to throw that word around. Oh, yeah, this is my personal walk. I'm a cuss. I'm a drink. I'm a smoke because this is my personal walk. Nah, that you, you're not following God for if you start doing all that stuff. Like, if you're in your walk with Christ and you are, like, living and, you're living and being comfortable in your sin... You don't have a true relationship with Christ. A true relationship with Christ means change. Repentance. Not saying, oh, I'm sorry, God, and going back to doing the same thing. Repentance means turn. To turn. To turn away from the wicked ways of this world. To truly follow Christ. That's what repentance honestly means. Look at this. Look at what Jesus had to say about following him. This is why you shouldn't make no excuses. If you want to be my disciple, oh, this is Luke chapter 14, verses verse 26. If you want to be my disciple, you must be comparison, comparison, hate. I think, yeah, comparison. Hate everyone else, your father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters. Yes, even your own life. Now, first of all, Jesus is not saying literally hate these things. He's not saying that. What he's saying is that if certain people don't like you because you're following him, Kick them aside. Leave them. Leave them where they at. If your mama don't want you to follow, leave her where she at. Who is, who is her to say anything about your walk with Christ? Yes, obey your parents. But if it comes to obeying God, if it comes to like disowning God, God come before your mama at the end of the day. So she tells you that she don't want you following Christ. Oh, God come before you, sweetheart. I'm sorry, mama. God come before you. He created me. He gave me, he put me inside of you. He knew me before you knew me. You know what I'm saying? So God, is he's not saying, hate your parents, hate them, kill them, do this to them. No, he's not saying that. He's just saying if they don't want you to follow him, leave them, leave them. Kick them aside. Let them stay where they at. Now, let me finish. And if you do not carry your own cross and follow, oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Let me go back some. So he said, um, hate everyone else, your father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters. Yes, even your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. And if you do not carry your own cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. This is look. This is the thing. <laughs> he is literally telling you 
if you don't give up everything and follow him you cannot be his disciple so if you living and comfortable in your sin and you're not giving up your sin because you feel like i love my sin but i still love god you can't serve two masters you can't serve even though the bible says you can't serve money and god i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna put a little you feel me a little twist to it now i'm not twisting up the bible any type of way don't get me wrong but look i'm just gonna say this you cannot love you cannot love your sin and love god at the same time it's the same way that goes for you cannot love money and love god at the same time you cannot have the love of money because the love of money is the root to all evil the love of your sin is the root to all evil. that means the devil still has you trapped he still has you trapped in a hole he still got you in a chokehold so, so literally stop making excuses for not following Jesus Christ. Go on to 24, stop making excuses. Get up, pick up your cross, and follow him for yourself. He is the truth. Y'all following every other religion that's filled with anger, lust, don't care about nothing else, don't care about people, don't love people. Y'all following those religions. But the Christianity, the faith, the true faith is based off love. It's not, it's not supposed to be based off hatred, but certain people in this religion is very hate, hateful, but that doesn't, that, that means they don't have the love of Christ in them. They don't have the Holy Spirit in them. They're false. They're false. They're false prophets. The Bible tells us that. Be aware of false prophets that's going to rise. They go rise. I don't know why I'm talking like a pastor right now, but, but anyways, they're going to rise at during the end times. During the end days, during the, 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 during the end times, they're going to rise. False prophets are going to come among you. They're going to dress like sheep in wolf clothing. That's what they're going to do. They're going to blind you, make you think that, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm a sheep. I'm telling y'all, man, y'all got to be aware. And then another thing I want to say, and this is the last point. Stop making excuses when it comes to your gift. God has placed a gift inside of you. He had placed a purpose inside of you. He said that I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. He said that he said that I have a plan and a purpose for you. You know what I'm saying? He said that. He said I have a plan and a purpose for you. <coughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I am sick, okay? I am sick trying to make this video, but he said all these things and don't get me wrong, y'all. It's easier said than done. It is. Sometimes I struggle with trying to understand these scriptures because it'd be easier said than done. But we got to look at Christ and be like, look, if you said this, I know you are a man of your word. And, and it's funny because God has done so many things in my life that it's like, why don't I full, full out trust him and believe? But don't get me wrong. It's still some un, it's still some un, uh, unbelief, not unbelief, not unbelief towards Christ. I believe in him whole, wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. But what I mean is that I still sometimes when I pray, I sometimes go into prayer with with the idea of I hope it happens. But if it don't, I won't be mad. That's the type of but I don't go in there with full full on faith. And I'm being 100 percent honest with y'all, bro. I only been saved for a year, but God has called me to be an evangelist, had called me to go out and preach his word to all nations. Although he's still working on my heart, that doesn't stop me from preaching the gospel to you guys. That doesn't stop me because I'm learning each and every day. But guess what? We can learn together. So, and I don't know where that just came from. Christ is, the Holy Spirit is really speaking because I don't know what that came from. I was talking about gift. That just came out of the blue. But follow your gift. Stop making excuses for not following your gift. Follow the gift that God has placed inside of you. It's a story in the Bible. And if I, I know that I, I I don't remember exactly what chapter, but I remember what it said. It was a it was a king. The king is God. Okay, it was a king who gave his servants a certain amount of a certain amount of uh silver, gold, or you know, we could just say seas or whatever. He gave his servants a certain amount of something, okay? And with that something, you can put in your own terms. You can put money, gold, silver, whatever. He gave him he gave them services. He gave one servant one. One servant, I, I don't remember the numbers. I'm just kind of paraphrasing it. Uh, one, one, one servant, two, and one servant, three. Now, the one with the with the one who gave the king who gave uh, well, God who gave the servant three, uh, three silver, three coins, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? That servant went out and he multiplied it. The one who got two, that servant went out and he multiplied it. But the one who had one, he hid it. Because he was scared to either lose it 
He was scared to invest it. He was scared to do anything with it. So he gave back the king what he what the king already given him without multiplying it. The story that the, 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 that the purpose of that parable is to show you that when God gives you something, go out and multiply it. Don't hide it from the world. If God gave you a tongue, a voice, go out and preach, go out and do what he calls you to do. Use your gift for his kingdom. If God gave you just a spirit of being patient, go out and be patient with somebody. Show your patience through your, you know what I'm saying? Just do something with whatever God giving you. Even if it's one gift, two gifts, three gifts, four gifts, five gifts, six gifts, go out and multiply that gift. Don't hold back that gift from the world. Stop making excuses for why you're not doing what God has called you to do. You better than that. The devil wants you to think that you don't have a purpose. He wants you to think that you don't have a gift, but you have a gift. So going to 2024, make sure that y'all are following what God has put inside of you. Forget what everybody else think. Just go after what God wants you to do. Forget about the money. The money go come. Just go after what God wants you to do. Stop making excuses. I love y'all, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Every Sunday, I'm going to try to come at y'all with like a type of a video like this to encourage and motivate y'all uh, biblically. And sometimes it's going to be real life motivation. You know what I'm saying? But I love y'all, man. I thank y'all for all that y'all have, all that you guys are doing. Uh, <laughs> and, bro, but I'll see y'all in the new year because this is the last video for 2023. We're going into 2024. No more excuses. Let's get it. Let's go. I love y'all. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.